Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2012 World Bowls Championships flashback as part of this Bowls Australia special series. Val Febo here with you, and today we're going to be looking at the women's pairs from 2012. And joining me are the one and only Kelsey Cottrell and Rebecca Van Ash. Guys, how are you going? Hey, Val. I'm going good. That's good. Now, we're going to test out your memories a little bit. Beck. I know you were just saying uh, off air that um, you, we were going to be stretching a little bit. It is 10 years, so just... First things first, when you look back at that World Bowls Championships, five gold medals, you won both the men's and women's trophies, an unbelievable series where everybody, every Australian bowler left with a gold medal. What are the first things that come to your mind? We'll start with you, Kels. The first things that come to your mind when looking back to that event? Um, yeah, look, I just um, am very thankful for all the wonderful photos because my memory is terrible. So um, it's nice to be able to look back on the photos and remember what an amazing um an amazing experience it was and not just the event itself like the lead up just the the camaraderie with um the team um you know the uh, amazing um memories that we have with the coaches and the staff um yeah it was just a, a crazy experience really a, a bit of a blur I think too like you sort of everything happened really quickly and especially those last few days of the world championships when everyone was winning gold and you're trying to fit in a couple you know a bit of a celebration here and there and you're in the grandstands watching the next event and I just those days just flew they just they went so quickly and all of a sudden we're on a plane heading home and it was just like holy hell what happened <laughs> and Beck, what are your memories yeah a bit the same it does feel like a bit of a blur um I, I do know that I still remember that as being the most enjoyable tour that I've ever been a part of um you know and Kelsey and I have been fortunate she, she's done a few more tours than me but um yeah we've been fortunate to experience some amazing ones over the years um, but that one, it just holds such a special place. And I think probably because of the achievement. Um, I don't know if I'm a bit of a statist, but um, I think for me, the blur is a lot of the successful stuff. I remember a lot of our fours, which is the only discipline we didn't meddle in uh, at the whole event. And it's the one that we never, ever talk about. Um, but unfortunately, my memories are a bit too fresh of that one. See, that's the funny thing. It's always, and you hear a lot of AFL players that have won so many things and they say, I always remember the ones that we lost rather than the ones that we won. And is that more of a case with you here? Yeah, I wish it wasn't. I, I, that's the one I'd be happy to block out. But um, like the our, our pairs game, for example, I, I can remember three ends or the three particular shots throughout the match um, that really stand out to me. Uh, and that's kind of it, I think. Uh, the rest of it does certainly seem a blur. All right, well, we'll ask you about that a little bit later on, Beck. But I want to ask you guys about the lead-in to the event at Lockleys. Now, uh, Kelsey, you had been to a World Bowls Championships before. Beck, you hadn't. So, uh, Kelsey, we'll start with you. What were your expectations going into this one? You'd played in a final. You'd won a silver medal before 2012. What were you expecting to do and what were you hoping to do at, at Lockleys? Um, yeah, look, I think it's probably the first major event that I went to that I did have expectations. Prior to that, I was just a teenager, just living the dream, days off school, going away and playing for my country. How good is this? Um, so I probably went into previous events with no great expectations. I was just delighted to be there. And, um, you know, and I was just a kid, new kid on the block. No one knew, you know, what I was capable of. So to actually go to Adelaide um, with um, a bit of a target on our back was was kind of cool. I, it was kind of made me feel quite grown up and quite, um, you know, I suppose one of the mature um, members of the team by that stage. And yeah, um, just, yeah, I, I suppose the lead up, I did feel like I lived in Adelaide. Um, I remember, <laughs> um, you know, lots of great memories staying at the caravan park right on the beach. I mean, we used to um you know celebrate people's birthdays and stuff and go and have fish and chips on the beach and um you know we had our our roomies and we had our um you know different little quirks so you know we got to know each other so well we were just in Adelaide all the time so um I probably haven't I actually don't think I've been back to Adelaide since I think that I've done my dash <laughs> um but yeah look it's an amazing lead up we had so much opportunity to play on the green so we felt really confident about um our chances going forward and um, yeah, turned up to the World Championships, obviously wanting to win, wanting to do well, knowing that we had the ability to do it. Um, and then, yeah, just, I guess, that little part of you that just hopes that you get that tiny bit of luck that you need. I think everyone needs a little bit of luck um, in one game here or there just to, to you know, get you through um, a big World Championships like that. And, um, you know, and it sort of, uh, I suppose, like, yeah, we yeah, sort of paid off for us. Um, you know, Ben talks about the fours. I think that probably helped um spur us on a little bit in the pairs as well knowing that we had only the one chance left to 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 win gold 
um, and we were going so well in the pairs and we, we trialed so well as a, a team leading up. Um, I actually remember one trial that we didn't have in Adelaide, we actually had at the Wirrilla Bowling Club and they put Beck and I together for the first time. I think we played Beck and I to correct me here. I think it might've been Rudy and Leif, maybe? Well, yeah. The pairs game it was like the last game of the trials. And um, yeah, I was sort of like, whoa, where's this come from? I've never played pairs at Beck before and we went really well, we smashed them. Um, <laughs> and it, was 20, it was 20 odd shots and I think we only played about 14 <laughs> ends, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, next thing the team gets um, named and we're playing pairs together. And then we went, um, another part of our lead up was playing at the Helensville Fiverr side. Um, and we did really well there. I think we may have even beat the national coach. I may have even beat my partner, Andrew, at the time. We may have even beat Alex Marshall. I'm not sure. There's a few big names that we did. I think I, I, hate, I hate to correct you on this one. We did beat Alex Marshall. I think we did beat Andrew. The only game we lost was to Steve Glasson. I'm like, this bloke yeah. doesn't even play bowls anymore. What happened? <laughs> we had him too. We had him too. Um, That's um, right. At least you got Andrew though. So Andrew yeah. Howard, if you are watching, um, yeah, you can uh, you can still live live with that. But um, Beck, I do want to ask you as well as your first world championships. Now you played together. You were obviously very confident beating, you know, some great players in the lead up, but how were the nerves for you? It was your first major event and you've since gone on to have a very decorated career. But at that point, you hadn't won the Com Games gold or the World Championships gold. What were you feeling leading into to Lockleys? Yeah, so the only big thing I'd really played, I'd played a, a couple of minor test matches for Australia. Um, we had played the Asia Pacifics at Lockleys 12 months prior. Uh, and I had played triples uh, in the middle of Kelsey and Lindsay. And we had never lost a game of triples there. We'd won the gold medal. Um, so we were pretty confident in triples and, we, and we'd been really successful. And we just sort of, we kind of never got put back together again. And then uh, that that trials that, that Kels was talking about, it was, um, yeah, it was quite amazing. It was like it all just clicked. We, we got put in these couple of um, little yeah. trial matches. And um, then we, we played uh, like Leif and Rudy. We, we played a couple of other trial matches there and we seemed to win them all. Um, which was amazing. And I remember sitting on the aeroplane when we were leaving Warilla and I was sitting on a window seat. I was looking out at the clouds and I got really emotional and the team had not been picked at this point. Don't forget, this was our last trials. And I thought, oh my God, Kelsey Cottrell and I are about to win the world pairs in a few months time. And it was a most surreal moment. And for me, then moving on from that, every practice we did, uh, we played Trent Tasman's against Joe and Val. We did a lot of preparation and there was just no part of me that thought we were not going to win that world pairs. And it was, yeah, as, as a, a huge um, calming and confidence boost when you feel like that. But we did so much work leading up to it that also led to it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was this kind of inner confidence. That's amazing. Well, I, I, I do love that. And you've got to have the belief that you can actually do it. And that's exactly what you did. And your first match was actually against Val and Joe, and you won that 17-11. So after you got that first match out of the way in the discipline, what was the feeling like between the two of you? Were you like, you know what? We've played them in the Trans-Tasman. These guys are bona fide champions. Have, you know, have we actually got what it takes? Was that the next step of belief? Yeah, I think we, because we'd played the, that Trent Tasman prior and, and stuff like that, I mean, we, we knew that Joe and Bao were probably our biggest opponents leading into it. They were the defending world champs. They were undoubtedly, you know, the best two in the world probably at that time. Um, we had a hard section too because we, we had them. We had Scotland, maybe like Malaysia. We had South Africa. We, we had a really tough section. And on paper, with these two relative, I mean, Kels was a known quantity, but I was very unknown internationally. And there was probably a lot of people thinking, oh, that was, these might be easy beats here. So, um, but we were, at, we, we played Joe and Val that first game. We'd actually played over at Hull Pass Bay, um, who was a, the support for, for Lockleys. Um, yeah, we, we knew it was a must win because we just thought this can really set the tone for us, take a bit of pressure off. And, you know, we can all of a sudden say, hey, you know, we, we're here to play, we, we mean business. Um, yeah, so I think that was probably a really important one for us to, to get it. And it was a hard day too. I think we might've had them in Scotland in the, almost the first day. Um, yeah. And we were able to tick them off really early, which was nice. Uh, very nice. And then you guys go up until round seven unbeated in the pool stages and Kelsey, you run into a red hot South Africa who get the better of you. Now that loss, although you don't, you never want to lose. Was that kind of like a loss that you needed to have just to say, okay, you know what, let's not get ahead of ourselves. You know, we've still had a great tournament, but you know, we just need to keep the foot on the accelerator a little bit. 
Yeah, I think as Beck said, you look at the draw on paper and we just had mm. probably one of the hardest sections I've ever had when I've gone into an international event. You you know, it, it was very, yeah, I mean, you listed all the countries that we had to play. So I think um, there was a good, like Beck said, there's a bit of confidence in the fact that we got our two hard ones over done with in the first day. So we were in a good a good position. So the fact that we lost against South Africa, it wasn't, panic stations it was very all well, very calm it was just like okay yeah we've had a loss but we're still in a good position we still played okay we've learned something from it um we're not gonna let it happen again I guess um so yeah we just kind of brushed it off and, and moved on and just um continue to to do our thing and, and and stick to our stick to our game plan stick to our process and just um yeah just sort of um to go on but I think Beck has a bit of a theory on why we lost that game well, I don't know if it's a theory. I, I think it's. I, I think it's I love your fact. theories, Beck. Well, I think I think this is one hundred percent why we lost. So we actually had a bit of breathing space, and we I think we were guaranteed top of the section anyway. And uh, our might have been our men's team, or it might have even been the women's triples counterparts needed Steve Glassman with them and and some other support crew. And we had this guy who was working as the New South Wales NTC coach at the time. He'd come over for a couple of days for a bit of experience. I think um, a coach by the name of Gary Willis and I'd never met the guy and Kels knew him I'd never met him and all of a sudden he's our ringside coach for this game against South Africa on this like killing field uh, back green at Lockleys that costing a lot of people and like all hell broke loose we couldn't do a thing the wind was blowing a gale we couldn't get near it we're getting smashed by South Africa and we've got this coach who I don't know, he didn't weave much magic that day. He didn't really help us. Um, so <laughs> I bet he doesn't put that one down on his resume. Well, it's lucky that he hasn't really gone on to do much with his coaching career. <laughs> um, I think that was a loss that he had to have, you see. He probably went and did some debriefs with Glass afterwards, and I think he probably improved and bettered himself after that. So are you saying you two are the reason he is where he is today? Oh, look, I've no doubt. <laughs> Very nice. Humble as ever, Beck. But you guys and Kelsey, you mentioned that, you know, you guys just went on from there. You were confident. A big win over Scotland in the semifinals, 24 to 1, if you don't mind. And then you're meeting your familiar trans-Tasman foes, Val Smith and Joe Edwards in the final. Now, at the time, Kelsey, you were a baby at 22. Beck, you're also a baby at 24. Combined age of 46. At the time of the final, Joe, uh, sorry, Val Smith was 47. So you guys were very, very young at the time. And when you, when you look back at that, were you, were you in awe of who you, who you're about to play? Because Joe had, Joe and Val had both already been there and, and done that. Um, look, I think you always have to respect your opponent, but you've also got to be confident that you can beat anyone. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, in the, in the sport of bowls, anyone can win. So um, we had a lot of things on our side. We had obviously the crowd support. We knew those greens back to front. And and for me personally, um, probably the the way that I played and the way that we played together to get that victory in the semi final so convincingly, um, we were just on yeah we were just on sky high. I think we just felt so confident about going into the final. We just had this amazing semi final where everything just worked. Um, we just played so well and um, and beat a, you know a quality pairing. Um, so yeah, I think we all just felt really confident going into the final and, um, yeah, you, you have respect for your opponent. I mean, you know, there was, there was times there where we got in front, we were in front for most of the game, but there was times when I remember, you know, a shot here or there, they could have got back in front and like, well, they could have got in front of us or got closer to us. And, um, you know, Beck managed to play some crackers at the, at the right time, just to make sure we had that bar focus. I think when you play someone, especially uh, you know, Joe with last ball, um, with her, amazing skills and obviously the best player in the world um you need to have a bit of a buffer on them you don't want to go into the last in or square or anything like that um so yeah we just managed to do that we just managed to, to stay in front the entire game certainly and the going to the final itself now how important was the opening end of that match now val smith led really well but then beck you managed to negate that and take two shots for for australia was that a massive weight lifted off the shoulders that you're in a final you've got the first end you're on the board and you can kind of just get ticking along. Yeah, I think so. Like you, you don't want to be you don't want to be chasing your tail early in a match. Um, the well, interesting thing about the pairs there was it was four bowls straight as well. Like a lot of people talk about three bowls straight now, but that was four bowls straight. So it was a very uh, interesting sort of game. It was almost like you know a game of singles up front between the leads. And you know, um, Kels has always been a very strong singles player, and, and we had a bit of a game plan um, with her lead bowls that um, you know she'd always try and nail it with a couple. Um, 
no matter what, we'd always try and get a third one passed. We, you know, we'd really try and set the head up. Um, you know, I've always been um, a lot stronger with my aggressive game. Um, so that, you know, kind of played into that style a little bit, uh, you know, and I think one of the reasons that I've always loved playing with Kelsey is that she's probably one of the most tactically astute players in the game. And, you know, to have her being able to call the shots and I've got four bowls to do some damage with, um, you know, how lucky am I up the other end? So yeah, to, to try and get on the board early and, and try and negate that early and um, give us a bit of a confidence boost, I think was really important. I don't remember that first thing. Like I said, there's probably about three shots I do remember throughout the game. Not so much that one, but um, you know, I do know we got out to a, a good start, um, which was important to us. And, we never got hugely in front, but we just always had that little bit of breathing space. So talking about the the match itself, you guys raced out to a 4-0 lead after three, but then Joe converts to score a three. So 4-3, and then a couple of ends later, it's 5-all. But then a few ends after that, Beck, you played a few bombs. Absolutely, And these might be the three shots you remember, I'm not sure, but you played a few bombs and the score ends up going to nine five after you've played a couple of weighted shots that just that have just hit the jack or disturbed the head. How confident were you that you know things were starting to go your way? The momentum had changed. You know they'd come back at you, but you're still holding them off. They've thrown everything at you guys, but there you are, still with a nine five lead. Yeah. I, so for me, um, because I hadn't skipped a lot internationally leading up to that, I would. Or actually, probably not skipped at all internationally. That the thing I worked on really hard in the six months leading up to World Champs was my aggressive game, and um, you know I sort of made the decision a couple of times to almost sacrifice events. And if the shot was to either drive or draw, um, I would drive as much as I could just to get practice at it and get confidence in it. And um, it was interesting. Um, you know, the golden nugget leading up to it, I made that call and and was fortunate enough to actually <laughs> to win the nugget with that aggressive style. But that was kind of a real um, defining moment, probably for me in my whole development in my career um, later on as well. So there was, yeah, there was, I think there was one particular one where there was a jack out on a boundary peg and you know, I had a very fine line to, to drive a bowl and kill the end or something. Uh, it wasn't re-spot back then. Um, yeah, so those sort of things, I think, definitely um, made a, a difference and, and gave me confidence because I'd done so much work on that style leading up to it. Um, I, I hope that I think Kels had the confidence in me to be able to call me on those shots. Um, there was one particular one that I really remember, which I think was maybe around that middle part of the game. Um, we were going away from from the big TV end, and Kels had called me on this shot. And from it was must have been the second bowl because I couldn't go up to the head, and I just had to trust the call. And I could not see what she was calling for the life of me. And it was it was just a, a draw shot between these two bowls. From where I was at the mat, it did not look like there was anywhere near enough room to do this. And I'm just thinking, oh, okay, I don't, I can't see it. But I had that much confidence in, in Kels as, as a lead and in her tactical awareness and her shot calls. And we had built up such a strong partnership that I thought if Kels is calling that shot and she's told me the way, then that's the way to go. And um, I, I was fortunate enough to get her. That's exactly when that uh, that bowl was. You had maybe an inch to draw to and it was Inch perfect, absolutely brilliant. And Kelsey, looking at um, looking at your game as well against Val, it was a really tantalising lead battle, very uh, very even early on. But you started to get the upper hand and really set back up well. What was the key to maintaining your focus throughout the contest? Um, look, it was it was a hard game for me because I'm probably um, different stages in my career, been a bit of a, like a perfectionist. Like it's if you're not on the jack, it's just not good enough. Um, but I managed to, I suppose, and particularly for that game with glass on the sideline, just um, just really focus on just getting as close as I can. The conditions weren't terrible, but they weren't great either. There was a bit of wind, obviously the greens and Adelaide are super quick all the time. So um, yeah, just making sure that I just got bowls in the head for Beck to work with and not always thinking about you know, beating Val in particular, just just get more close than Val, just get as close as I can, minimise those loose ones, you know, and when I do have those loose ones and you just let them go and you just know, <laughs> you know, you've just got them out way too sweet. It's probably going to be 10 feet heavy, but it's all it's all good because Beck will come along and, you know, get the jack back or something, you know, so um, probably just had a really good positive mindset. And again, it comes back to our combination, just felt really confident in Beck. And I think as well, the first couple of ends when that wind was sort of, you know, circling a little bit and, and the green was quick, um, I just had good confidence that Beck would play those aggressive shots. And I think as well, um, we've played Joe so many times um, and Joe's a bit the same where she's a bit of a perfectionist and she, you know, 
drawing touches left, right and centre. I think the conditions didn't really allow that. So I felt really confident that our game plan and our style was really suited to the conditions that day. So, yeah, just felt really good about um, just plodding along. Um, don't overthink it. Just get balls close and, and, and the game will just take care of itself. And then you get to the end of the 15th end, three to play. Joe Edwards seals or trims the margin to three. How are the nerves between the both of you? They've, you you said you've been in front all day. They're still breathing down your necks. They've thrown everything at you, but you are still ahead. What's going through your minds with those three ends to go? I think for me, I think it didn't matter how far ahead we got. I'm, because it was Joe and Val, I, I never felt like it was ever enough breathing space. Um, so, you know, unless we were nine arm at last end and didn't have to play that last end, I never felt like we were clear. Uh, so I guess that was a good motivator in itself to to know that we always had to just like you couldn't afford to have a lapse in concentration because all of a sudden you know one end we lose a number. Um, Glass was really good for me on the sideline um, for that. So I like to uh, be able to tune out a little bit um, even in the middle of an end like when I'm not bowling. Um, so I used to be able to just go over. I have my drink bottle next to him. Um, he would just talk about something that was absolutely irrelevant to the game. Like he might crack a joke. He might just point someone something out in the crowd that was funny um just something just to calm me and actually take me away from the game because then that helped stop the the nerves build up or the stress of the score or anything like that so um yeah just having that being able to actually take myself out of the moment was actually probably really good for me um but again I think I just I don't know I had this real inner confidence in the two of us that we wouldn't take our foot off and we just keep playing our game instead of worrying about them well, you didn't. And the final end, um, you know, they needed three to take it to an extra end. But Kelsey, you were right on the jack. And then Beck, you just put one in after they split the end wide open because Kelsey was right on it, draw a uh, heavyweight from uh, from Joe. And then you got yours in. What were your emotions when Joe Edwards stepped up to the mat? And we'll start with you, Kelsey. And you knew that she wasn't, that she'd missed. What were the emotions? <laughs> Um, I think I'm starting to feel them now, <laughs> just thinking about it. Um, yeah, just, I suppose, just excitement, relief. I mean, there's so, I think there's so many things that go through your mind. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think you get to that point where you've concentrated so hard on the game and you, you've been in this zone and then all of a sudden the game's over and you just, I don't know, sometimes you just unleash. I think I just lost it. I think the arms probably went up in the air, hugged back, you know, like look up to your family. Like it just... Um, I think all the emotions just start to to come out and you've got no control over it really. You're just so bloody excited. <laughs> no, it was it, and Beck, world champion, best in the world. What what were you feeling? Yeah, I think it was um a bit the same. It was probably a bit of relief. Um so we had uh, we, like we we sort of started the floodgates a little bit. We were the first team to to win a gold medal at the championships. Um, you know, we we I think we'd played in at least one or maybe two finals and come away with silver medals. So you know, that kind of, yeah, we were sort of hoping that this would kind of be the thing that win that first gold and, and it would carry on. Uh, it was Lindsay Clark's birthday on the day. So we thought we needed to give Lindsay a, a good birthday present. Um, yeah, I remember like we we embraced and we embraced our families. I actually ran up into the crowd uh, to see my family and um, we had a, a slight problem because the starter was there to do drug testing and, and the drug tester lost sight of me for a minute. So I was in a bit of trouble on that for a, for a split second. Um, yeah, like I think emotion just overcame us at that point. But at that we, point, that's what they we, need to understand. Yeah, well, that's right. But I think we were we were very respectful at the end. I do remember watching that last bowl a couple of times and, and we were very conscious of wanting to acknowledge our opponents and shake their hands and do all of that first because we did have a huge respect um, for the New Zealanders uh, before we sort of let the party start. Actually, I did notice that when watching it, guys, you sort of, you were a bit reserved, shook Joe and Val's hands and then, and then it was just, it was blubbering almost um between the two of you but the the relationship that you two share i think is quite special because you won your first world championships gold together and then six years later you shared that moment at the commonwealth games in the fours and won a gold together there so talk to us about the bond that you two have carried since 2012 uh yeah well, and 2016 we won um fours gold world championships uh, in christchurch so Fortunately, we were able to win some fours together. Um, so that was good. I guess I, I, in my retirement, a few people have said to me, have you got any regrets about your career? And so I haven't really got regrets. Um, probably one of my disappointments, which I can't do anything about, I'm not in control of it, uh, is probably the fact that Kelsey and I didn't get a lot more opportunities um, to play P20 
pairs together. So I guess that'll forever be a little bit of a disappointment. I think we could have dominated it for a long time. Um, you know, we, we have been a formidable combination. That's why I think we were able to carry a couple of teammates to some fours championships. Hopefully they're not watching. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they'll see it. <laughs> Domestically, we, we still played together. Um, you know, we won an Australian Open titles and, and things like that together. So I'll always, yeah, I'll always be really disappointed that we never got more chances. Um, but I think I'll, I'll really relish that. We, we've developed a very close friendship out of it. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I absolutely love playing alongside Kelsey and I wish we could have done it more. Kelsey, you echoing those same sentiments? Yeah, I mean, we think about, I, I think about different pairs combinations that we've played over the years and not just, you know, in, in any event. And there's so many combinations that have stuck together for years and years and years you know like um you know even like Ellen Faulkner and Amy Monkhouse from, from England played together for such a long time Joe and Val and and we kind of just got thrown in for a world championship one and then chucked back out <laughs> um but yeah look I suppose the good thing is we've got a 100% record at world championships in pairs so we can go out on that note um we have an amazing friendship as well that basically started from you know probably not I suppose a year and a half or so before that world championships playing together at Asian civics and, and traveling around as Jackaroos. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, we've, we're, we're lifelong mates now and we've, we've shared so many memories together over the years. Um, as Vic said, yeah, it hasn't been in pairs, but we've had some success in fours. Um, and yeah. And I think even though Vic's ditched us, gone into retirement, um, yeah, hopefully grab your head of retirement for some, some events um, in the future. Otherwise, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to like holiday together or something. Take the family holidays um, or go to the, I know you guys have gone to the Australian open tennis a few times. So just come down to Melbourne for that. But um, just one final one before I let you guys go, you guys have obviously done everything in the world of bowls that there is to do, but the first world championship gold, I'll ask each of you, where does it sit among your many accolades that are probably, probably overflowing through your trophy cabinet. So we'll start with you first, Kels. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think you can, I don't think you can put them in order. Um, I think every gold medal you win on that international stage, um, has a different meaning or, a, you know, a different, you have a different memory. I think that one was special because it was the first, um, you have other memories, you know, at a Commonwealth games and it's special because it was a home Commonwealth games or, um, yeah, I, I just, I don't think you can ever put them in order. I think, um, this is amazing to, to have this conversation and reflect on something that happened 10 years ago. I think, um, that just shows that these, these events that we play together and, and our successes at Jackaroos, um, you know, it is lifelong memories that we share and that we share together. And, um, yeah, yeah, you can't really put them in order, um, you just love every moment and you just hope that there's more around the corner, I suppose. <laughs> and Beck? Yeah, I think a bit the same. Like each one has a different sort of memory to it. I mean, for this one, um, I, I think it'll always hold a special place because it was our first one. I think the fact that, that we were able to do it together um, because just that whole tour, the fact that, you know, and I know I, I listened to the girls talk to you the other day uh, and and they said about how you know how special it was because ten athletes walked away ten world champions um, and I think there's so much of that that was so special um, and will like it's more about that tour that I remember more, more about the game so I think in that sense um, it'll always hold a special place you know there's other achievements that we've had that have held special places for different reasons you know home Commonwealth Games being able to do dual medals at championships you know for me. It, 2016 was after a comeback um you know things like that so they all kind of hold a, a special reason for for different reasons um but yeah this one was very special well guys it's been an absolute pleasure sitting here with you and recalling the 2012 world bowls championships your very first um of many 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 major international trophies so congratulations again beck van ash and uh, kelsey cottrell thank you very much for joining me here on uh, bowls australia's world bowls championship special Can I Can I had one last thing you certainly and I, apologize, I haven't watched the other ones yet so i apologize if i'm doubling up but i just want to say on behalf of the jackaroos that one of the biggest memories for me of that world championships is our special bond that we had with dalsey our former team manager who passed away um and just want to say on behalf of the jackaroos we think about you all the time and we love you
Beautiful. A beautiful way to end. Kelsey Cottrell and Rebecca Van Ash, thank you very much. Stay tuned to Bowls Australia's social media and YouTube channels for more of these specials because we've got plenty more coming. Uh, as we recall, back 10 years ago, a full decade to that f wonderful event at Lockleys.